Hi, I'm Jay, the happy colorist, and welcome back to my channel. Um, it's early in the morning for me, as is it is so often. I have my cup of coffee here, and I thought we could finally continue with our color, color and chat with our little plum fairy from Meredith Dillman, because um, she's um, laying on my desk um, always, so I see her every day, and I really want to um, get her finished. So I thought we could make a short video today and basically just do her dress. Um, I want to do her dress. You see that I already have put a base down um, basically in the same colors that I use for the flowers, just in much darker. Um, basically like, like it is here. You can see that um, it is the same here that um, Meredith used the red and the pink from the flowers here too. This is basically what I want to do too. Um, and since it, this is still, um, hopefully, I hope that I can still upload this in May, um, Magical Methods May, um, I want to try and do the, the folds here. Um, it is something that I've started to um, um, practice in um, Iri's book. Um, maybe you have seen it in my finished pictures from April. Um, the tracing around the festivals one where I um, color the red drapes and try to um, do the folds. So this is something that um, I, I'm practicing this month, folds and fabric. Um, so yeah, and this is basically my all time favorite for pink red combinations. I use it all the time for all kinds of things. I just love these. You can see the reds getting very short. This is all Pablo's um, and this is the same colors we used for the flowers. It's granite rose 493, uh, salmon rose 071, Uh, no, some are pink and then rose pink 082 and this is um, carmine 080. And because this won't be dark enough, I'm also adding um, raspberry 1030 and black grape 996 from the Prismacolors. Um, the black grape is a very, very, it's one of my favorite colors. It's very, very dark red and I think there's also Tuscan red maybe I'll have to see whether the raspberry works well otherwise maybe I'll add in Tuscan red instead I really love Tuscan red it's one of those colors that you can't find anywhere else so um, grab yourself a cup of coffee and something to color and yeah let's color together Just have a zip <laughs> before the coffee gets cold right So let's start with her dark um, skirt. I think I'll give it a base of the rose pink because the the marker base that I put on is already so dark. I wonder whether I should try and put you in closer. Maybe I should do that. Just look away for a second. Like so. Yeah, now I think you can see better what I'm actually doing. Um, my problem is that I'm using um, my old webcam and that thing doesn't have a zoom. I mean, it, ki it kind of does have a zoom, but it's not optical, but just digital. So what it basically does is just it um, enlarges the picture and it gets all pixely and you can't see anything. So I've really won't run into this problem when I try to film those um, like how-to videos for, for the magical methods may. I fear you can't see, can't see much. Oh well. I'm just um, just doing a very light layer. You can't see it because it's the exact same color as the, as the base. Um, the, the marker base that it's already on but um, when I then color over it the pigment that is on the page will grab with the other pigments and then mix I've been super into mandalas this month um, 
I actually, before May, before I did my first mandala this month, I have, I don't think I have ever done one, strangely enough. I mean, even people who aren't really into coloring know of mandalas and accept that mandalas is something for relaxation and that, you know, adult people can do too. Even if they think um, adult coloring itself is strange. But I've never done it before and then, because I'm not, wasn't in the right mindset for, you know, a real picture. Just grabbed a mandala one night and I was laying on the couch and couldn't do much because my back hurt. Yeah, and I started mandala and it was so much fun. Just, you know, so relaxing to not think about shading and where to put wood. And uh, to just um, try different color combinations, try and make it just look harmonious. Really fun. Then I just colored, I think, three or four more at least. And then went out and bought more mandala books. <laughs> so, for you or to you, this looks just as it does it before. <laughs> this too. The same color. Because you can't see that there's actually base color over it now. But I promise. There's color pencil on now. Like so. Mm. Let's go in with the red, very, very lightly, to not destroy any highlights that I want to put in. You might have seen it this this month in the book books that I show. I don't know whether I already posted my haul or what. But my um, taste in colouring books has really started to... I wouldn't say change because I still love all the colouring books that I loved before. But um, just, you know, widened. So colouring books that I looked at a year ago and didn't want. Now I suddenly was just really, really into them. Especially the more anime one. I mean, as you can see with Meredith Dillman, she already has this, you know, very slight anime-ish style. I'm trying to look, you know, where to put the shadows and where to put the folds and the line art absolutely doesn't match what the, what the original picture does. So I think I'll just, you know, not look at that. So yeah, there's a whole new world of coloring books opening up for me as well. You know, it comes. With, it starts with the Chinese ones, of course. Um, but it doesn't stop there. Like there's lots of good um, like Western artists that do amazing anime style art, and it also meant that there were lots of coloring books. Um, like that had been released last year, years ago, that suddenly, you know, was really interested in. So, whole new world opening up to me. When it comes to the folds, um, you have to decide where's top and where's bottom, basically, and then um, do a very sharp contrast, like the, the darkest part is at the bottom, and then comes the extre extreme light on top. I mean, I want everything to be in this very dark red, but um, I'm, I'm very careful with where I put it, because then it's, if, if I put it anywhere, it's hard to get um, put in highlights. I mean, I got this um, super small, like I always use this one, the, the Derwent electric eraser for erasing because it's so good, but if I can find it, I 
I got this little thing. The Tombow Mono Mono Razor. Super super tiny for the details. Thought that would be a good idea to have, so I can um, put in highlights with that too if I want to. But still, I'm I'm you know in the very first step, and I don't really know where the shadows are supposed to go. I'm a bit more careful. And I spend uh, lots of time this month, like looking at new coloring books and ordering new coloring books, and way more time with that than actually coloring because, yeah, it's not that, not that kind of month. So it happened that after I saw, actually after I sorted in um, the the pick the the books for my April haul video. What I usually do is like I uh, all the books that I get each month I put on a little pile so that I won't forget them to show them. And then after I did the video I sort them into my into my shelf. <laughs> and when I did so um, this time I noticed that I had run out of uh, space. I couldn't fit in more books. Um. <laughs> Oops. Now, um, that doesn't mean that I don't want, that I don't, won't get more coloring books. I just need to get more space. Um, so what I did is I um, ordered uh, like a little card that I've seen a lot of you have for the coloring supplies so that I could put them in there because um, they need to be right next to me because otherwise everything that's not in reach you just won't use. That's just how it is, right? That's always how it is. It's with the same with the coloring books. I have um, a shelf right next to me at the on the and the desk um, with all the coloring books in. And if I ever run out of space in that shelf and have to put coloring books somewhere where I'm not right next to them, that just means that I the, the books that are there I won't I won't use. But yeah, I use I ordered this um, this little card, and uh, it's still on its way to me. And then I'll sort in all my coloring supplies there. Oh, and uh, when we talk about sorting, look what I got for my washi tape. Isn't this the sweetest thing? This little basket. And I have, I just, you know, just on a whim, I bought several more and then I'll put those um, in the cart. Just love these. I got these at Action, obviously. And they're just my color. Perfect. Some of these folds look a bit weird. But that's just how it is now. Oh, and uh, while we talk about washi, I watched Honor's latest haul, and um, she showed her, like I think, notebooks, and uh, she uses washi um, like as little flags. And immediately I had to copy this because I always, you know, f never find stuff, so I just marked out the polychromous or the three P, right, <laughs> um, as Jude would say, um, the polychromous, the Pablos, and the neo color with those flags so I can easily find them. So lots of ideas for using washi tape. Okay, so I'll just um, put the lightest color, the granite rose, right where I think the highlight should be, just so that nothing can go can go there. Uh, 
I wonder whether this is actually the folding the other way around. I have to think about that. <laughs> Mm, have a sip of coffee. Mm, yeah, I got really into the like the collection aspect of coloring books, which doesn't help my storage problem, obviously. But um, there are just so many wonderful artists out there that do so wonderful art. And um, really had to get some of their some of their art. Especially, I noticed a couple of European artists, so they are easier for me to um, acquire than others. There are still a lot of um, coloring books um, that I just can't source easily. Like, um, I. I did that video um, with a little heads up about Cla Clara's book in Amazon Co UK because Clara Markova had posted on Facebook that she um, had restocked. Oh, just back me up for, for those of you that don't know. Clara Markova, um, she sells her coloring books in her in her Etsy, but also she stocks Amazon.com and Amazon um, Co UK so that you can buy her coloring books there. And um, that usually means that the shipping is um, cheaper. I got uh, my, my the books I have of her from there too because of the shipping. I got it from Amazon Co UK, but um, they often run out of stock, and um, then you have to wait for her to restock them before you can buy it. And so apparently she restocked Amazon Co UK, but she said because of um, Brexit, she couldn't she, she wouldn't be able to restock them um, for the foreseeable future anymore. And um, and I don't, I mean, I don't really understand the reason behind this, but you never know what Amazon thinks, so it's apparently ruled by Amazon. And then I wanted to um, buy some US coloring books um, by Phoenix Amulet publishing. They publish um, books by Madel Rubio and also Grazia Salvo and they're amazing quality, um, I think. They're those spiral bound books. They're amazing quality for very very good price. But they don't sell um, outside of the US but you can um, buy them their books from Amazon UK and then have it basically so, um, shipped to you from Amazon US. And I've um, done this with Fantasia. You can't do it all the time. They have to have stocks allocated to Amazon Co UK. So Amazon Co UK does run out of stock too. Um, but when they have stock, then you can order there and it's pretty, pretty easy. And shipping is very, very, um, very, very moderate. And the best thing is you don't have to worry about um, import duties because well it, the thing landing in the tax or in the customs office which is always my, my biggest problem because Amazon handles that for you. So um, a couple of days ago I um, saw that Amazon Co UK had actually um, stocked um, cats and dogs by Constantius, Constantinus Liermanses, I think is what he's called. And um, that's just such, such a sweet book that I really want. And they also had um, Flowers and Gems by Grazia Salvo, which I decided I also wanted because I, again, I, I think those uh, books by Phoenix Amulet Publishing, they're just so good quality, um, really wanted to have it. So I put it all in my cart in, on Amazon.uk, proceeded the checkout and, and things. And then Amazon.uk was like, yeah, sorry, Amazon US doesn't ship to Germany anymore like that. And that's just, I mean, they used to. <laughs> and now, I mean, some of the books, I think Flowers and Gems, I saw it stocked um, on the German Amazon too, but Cats and Dogs has no listing there. 
sister. That was very unfortunate. I wonder whether this is also um, just Amazon going like, yeah, we just don't want to trouble ourselves with, with all of that. I just put on a very light base of the dark red because that's how our, the base color we want in the dress, right? And we put in the highlights already just very lightly. I don't see why, whether you can, I don't know whether you can see what I did while I was just chatting away. I was just, you know, darkening the the edges with a dark red like so. you can already kind of see the highlights I put in here it's just very important for me as a guy because often I didn't just forget um, where the highlights are supposed to be oh yeah But yeah, I'm just so glad that there are so many um, artists out there that um, decide to sell their original art, just the line art as um, coloring books. Because um, I don't think it's that much more um, trouble and we just get awesome Awesome coloring books. So let's see how the um, raspberry works, whether this works as a to have a darker. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. I just, I just put it in over the Pablo. Just to make the edge darker and then in the, at the very end I'll go in with the uh, dark grape and the very darkest shadows. Oh yeah, that looks good. I think we're really getting somewhere with our dress. We really have to um, um, change my way of thinking about um, the colors because I usually always use the dark red of the Pablo's as my darkest color in the shadows. And now I basically want the whole dress to have that color. So. <laughs> It's really a balancing act for me to um, not ruin the highlights, keeping the highlights and yet not making the whole thing too too light because the color it has now is too light. I, I wanted it to be really dark red. So, But yeah, we can keep layering. I mean, um, the Pablos are just so lovely. Keep layering. And um, this is the Canson mixed media paper, I think. Really, really good. Um, I bought um, different different paper to print on, but I haven't tried it yet. I bought a marker paper and um, like normal uh, printer paper and a 
uh, I think 180 gram, 160 or something. Amberly was recommending it. I'm really excited to try that out. Did I mention that I really started to love coloring fabric like that? It's just, just so much fun to give it um, dimension like that. I hope I can get there with skin too some someday. But I deliberately didn't, I think, add skin or learn to color skin to my list of things I want to learn for this month because I think skin is its absolute own topic. But since I really got into all of those um, wonderful anime style, portrait style books, um, I think there will be um, ample opportunity to, to learn how to do that. It's going dark again. And then the second, I'll uh, uh, try the black grape to really add in some dark shadows. I really like this little, little eraser. Should have gotten one way earlier. I really like um, combining the Prismas and the Pablos, or the Pablos and the Polychromas. They just work so well together. Like so. And now if you go in with the oh wait there. I've got a bit more depth here. And here. Just in the darkest areas. I mean I think you're supposed to do this at the very end. But if I do that, then it's hard for me to actually see where where the darkest areas are supposed to be. Um, so I can see it really adds some definition. I'm really enjoying those these very deep dark Prismacolor um, colors. It's really something that you don't have in any other set. Like so now we can back with the, can go back with the red and I just make it just a bit more dark because the whole thing is still too light for my taste because I was so afraid of um, taking away the highlights. Because, but now that the black grape is the darkest shade. Okay, now we're going back with the Prismacolor, just deepening. Got 
continuing to deepen the shadows because the whole thing is still a bit too oops too too pink for my taste. I went a bit over the line here. It's not perfect uh, as far as shadows goes. I, I see um, when I put in shadows, I, I do see areas where I think, ah, oh, no, that should have been lighter. Um, but I think if you don't look, you know, super close, then it's mostly fine. Now just you know really deepen the the crease of the fold so that you have the highest contrast um added basically the highlight on top and the the darkest shadow right next to it. That's how you make it really deep. Okay, and then I just go in with my red again and really try deepen up the color because again, it's still too pink in many areas for my liking. And if I go in and burnish with with the lighter pink now, then everything will continue to be pink. So just use. My Way more pressure now. I'm not completely burnishing it because I do need uh, some medium color for the highlights, but pretty close. And I did want her dress dark, as I said. Okay. And now let's try and Blend the rest in with the uh, what's that? The rose pink. Careful not to make it too too pink because it is supposed to be dark red. So maybe take in some of the two two light highlights. Just blend it all in, especially the. If it's too light, then it looks like. I mean, I want it to look like velvet, and velvet wouldn't reflect that much. I'm just blending it all in now and then I'll go back over it with the darker red for the areas where I want it to be more red but just so that it's all burnished and there's no um, specks of white from the paper showing anymore.
I could just do this with a blender too, I suppose. Just to put in some more dark red again. Because if you um, blend with the medium color, it, sometimes it loses a bit of the uh, contrast that it should have. So I always go in with the uh, with dark shade color in the, in the shady areas to give that contrast back. Well, I think now you can see that she has the, it's basically the same color, um, like the flowers. And yet it is not. Yeah, I think we can leave her at that. Um, we're running super long again, so I think I'll just um, up, finish up the rest um, of the picture off camera. And then next time we see for her skin and hair, I'd say. Because I bet this takes me long enough, uh, skin and hair takes me long enough to fill one in a whole uh, color and chat. <laughs> So thank you very, very, very much for watching. My coffee is now cold. I hope you drank yours while you watched this. Um, and we'll see you the next time. Bye.